We are now going to look at the adductor muscles of the thigh. That's AD beginning, and ad means towards in Latin. So these are muscles that pull towards. So there's first the long and the short of it. There's the adductor longus, which is here, and then there's the adductor brevis, which is there. That's the long adductor and the short adductor. These are more superficial, and they arise. In fact, all the adductors arise from the underside of the pubic bone, and they fan out, running across the inside of the thigh, attaching to the inner border of the femur, which is your long leg bone. And their basic function is that they pull the leg inwards like this. If the muscle contracts and your leg is straight and it's free, your leg will be pulled inwards. If, however, you're standing on your leg, then what this muscle is doing really is it's acting as a stabilizer and it's helping you do little things like being able to stand, to walk. And as you do, as you make movements, any movement that tends to pull you the other way, if the adductor contracts, it will pull you inwards and it will improve your balance. You will injure your muscle, the adductor muscle, playing sports or doing activities which pull the leg outwards suddenly. And very common sports are soccer or rugby or some sort of sport where you're doing jinking movements from side to side. In soccer in particular, where a player will kick against the ball and somebody else kicks against the ball and then there's a huge pulling movement on the inner side of your thigh. So adductor muscles are very common in, in, in soccer. They're also common in skiing. If you, say, were to slip on some black ice and your legs shot out, again, you would injure and set off triggers in your adductor muscles. Sitting cross-legged would tend to prolong the uh, trigger points in the adductor muscles. If you have osteoarthritis in your hip, it can tend to turn on trigger points in the adductor muscles. Trigger points in these muscles tend to occur high up in the groin. And there's two trigger points, one in adductor longus and one in adductor brevis. Remember, the muscle itself is quite superficial, so it occurs quite soon after, as you start pressing down into your leg, you will strike these triggers. Don't need to press deeply. When these triggers are turned on, then you will feel the pain the most commonly here which is in the groin, high up. And interestingly, if you look, this overlies the hip joint. So the pain from adductor longus and brevis is very, very similar to pain that you get from your hip joint. It's interesting, if you were to ask most people, where is my hip? They would point somewhere out here. And that's actually a long way from the joint itself. The joint is in your groin, that's the place that the joint actually is, and the place that you feel the pain is, from an osteoarthritis of the hip, is actually in the groin. So this mimics osteoarthritis of the hip, and if you have osteoarthritis of the hip, it will often turn on these triggers. So they kind of work or walk together. The second place that these triggers refer pain to is down in the lower leg. And often, there's a little bit of a join between them. And again, this pattern is very similar to the pain that you get from osteoarthritis of the hip. We're now going to look at the hamstring muscles. This is a very common name that most people know. Your hamstrings run down the back of your thigh. There are two sets of muscles that attach to this sitting bone. The first, which runs out to the outside, so it's the lateral muscle, is called the biceps femoris. So remembering, it arises from the sitting bone, it runs down, and the tendon wraps around the back of the knee and attaches into the bone on the outside of the lower leg, which is called your fibula. So this is a muscle that runs across two joints. That's running across the hip joint, and this is running across the knee joint. It's called the biceps because that means two heads. So the first head is the main one attaching to the sitting bone. The second, which you can't see on this particular uh, drawing, is actually attaches to the long bone, the femur, 
and it's called the biceps femoris because femoris is of the femur so that's the outer muscle the inner part of the hamstrings is made up of two muscles and they have very long names they both begin with semi which means half so you have a semi tendinosus and a semi membranosus well the both of them have very long tendons and the semi tendinosus is the more superficial the membranosus is tucked underneath it they both act together the tendons come down they run around the inside of the knee and at the back and then they sweep around and attach to the tibia and all together this structure here which you can feel round the back and the inside of your leg of your knee is called the pes anserine and this is quite an important stabilizer of the knee so what these muscles do they always or almost invariably act together and they do two things they pull the leg towards us and if it contracts it will extend the hip so pull the leg towards us the top of the leg and it will flex the knee so it will pull the bottom of the leg towards us therefore the way they work is as you walk as you extend your leg they will help push your body forward as during walking during running during jumping but they also bend the knee up and if you think of how as you finish your step how you lift your leg up bend your knee to start moving it forward that is a hamstring movement and the way you injure your leg is to do exactly the opposite so you can see someone jumping over hurdles the front leg that jumps over the hurdle that is stretching the hamstrings to their full extent so you're flexing your hip extending your knee and that movement so if you were to fall down slip and stretch your leg out in front of you that will classically cause a hamstring injury it may injure the tendons but very very often you will get trigger points in the muscles themselves there are quite a lot of trigger points that occur in both of these muscles and they can be neatly divided into those that occur on the inside of the leg and those that occur on the outside so the ones that occur on the inside which remember are into the semi tendinosus semi membranosus there's a, a bunch that run largely in the center of the muscle and one that runs lower down in the in the thigh and these will refer pain up into the lower part of the buttock into the gluteal fold which is the fold that joins your buttock to your leg and then you may get some pain running down the back of your thigh so those are the inner triggers give you pain that largely focuses around your buttock and the gluteal fold and running down the back of your thigh trigger points in the biceps femoris occur in the center part of the muscles and you get them clustered around this area here this pain is actually referred downwards so you would feel it behind the back of your knee and there are lots of people that have knee pain and they feel it in the back of the knee and the doctor examines the knee you may even have mris you have all sorts of things done and they say well look we can't really find very much wrong with your knee look up here because this is a potent cause of pain at the back of the knee it also may affect or cause pain running up the back of the thigh but this is where it focuses